Remember, we call a graph simple if there are no loops or multiple edges between the same pair of vertices. And we call a graph planar if we can draw that graph in such a way so that the edges never overlap or cross each other. What can we say about these simple planar graphs? Well, it may look like something like this. We could have a number of vertices that are connected in various ways with no loops and never having multiple edges between the same pair of vertices. But they can go on and do all kinds of, all kinds of interesting things still. One thing we know that's true for simple planar graphs is the handshaking lemma. The handshaking lemma, after all, is true for all graphs. We call the handshaking lemma tells us that the sum of the degree of your vertices at each vertex, if, if you put a little dot to count its degree, here this vertex is degree three, because there are three edges instant to it. This vertex has degree two, and degree three, and degree three, and degree three. If you add up all those points, it's going to be the same as just calculating two times your number of edges. Because there are two points, one on each end of each edge. There's a similar argument we can make to tell us something about the degree of the faces. When I say the degree of a face, I just mean the number of edges that lie along the boundary of that face. For instance, this face has degree one, two, three. This face has degree one, two, three. This face also has degree one, two, three, ah, four, degree four. And the outside region, we also think of as a face having degree one, two, three, and four. What happens if you sum up the degrees of all of those faces, three and three and four and four. What is that sum going to be? Well, again, notice there are two dots lying, uh, lying along each edge, one on either side of each edge. And so the total number of these green dots will also be two times the number of edges, just as the total number of pink dots was two times the number of edges. So you can either sum the degree of the vertices to get two times the number of edges, or, if you're in a simple planar graph, you can sum the degree of the faces and get two times the number of edges as well. Now, there's one more thing we can say about simple planar graphs, and that's whenever we have a face, we're not going to have a face with just one edge, because that would be a loop. And we're not going to have a face with two edges, because that would be multiple edges between two vertices. So neither of these can happen in a simple planar graph. These are not simple. Instead, the fewest number of edges that we can have in any face is going to be three. So we know that for any given face in a simple planar graph, the degree of that face must be at least three. That means when we sum up the degree of the faces, each face will have at least three, so the sum will be at least three times the number of faces. Aha, here's another relationship. Two times the number of edges must be at least three times the number of faces. These relationship between edges and faces might remind us of Euler's insight, Euler's theorem. Recall Euler discovered that for simple planar graphs or any planar graph, the number of faces minus the number of edges plus the number of vertices is two. If we solve for f here, we find that the number of faces equals the number of edges minus the number of vertices plus two, which means that three times the number of faces is three times the number of edges minus three times the number of vertices plus six, multiplying the right-hand side by three. But we just said that three times the number of faces is less than or equal to two times the number of edges. So this quantity, three times the number of edges minus three times the number of vertices plus six, 
is going to be less than or equal to two times the number of edges. Now let's simplify. Subtract two times the number of edges, you get an edge. Move over minus 3v as plus 3v and plus 6 as minus 6. We find that in a simple planar graph, there is a bound on how many edges you have. The number of edges is bounded above by three times the number of vertices minus six. Your intuition here should be, if you have a fixed number of vertices, you can't have too many edges. Because if you put too many edges, they'll have to start crossing each other. Think of one of our canonical examples of a non-planar graph, K5, the complete graph on five vertices. Here, we had five vertices, and we connected them all with edges. And we saw in this graph it was non-planar. Well, this inequality will give us a quick way to verify that. What are the number of edges in this graph? There's one, two, three, four, five along the outside, another one, two, three, four, five on the inside. So there's a total of 10 edges. How many vertices are there? One, two, three, four, five. So three V minus six is three times five minus six, or 15 minus six, which is nine. So our number of edges here is greater than three V minus six. This tells us this can't be a simple planar graph. And indeed, like we saw before, this is not a planar graph. So these are some of the wonderful properties that we can find for simple planar graphs. I'll leave you with a question. It is known that in a simple planar graph, there's always some vertex that has degree at most five. That is, you can't have a simple planar graph where all of the vertices have degree six or more. There must always be one that comes out to be something less. If they were all of degree six or more, then you would have edges laying on top of each other. Can you, using these facts, prove that in any simple planar graph, you can always find some vertex that has degree at most five?